All right, this video is called The Enlightenment. And remember, for years in Europe, people lived under the control of monarchs who had the complete power, the total control. This was called absolutism. So absolutism was now being challenged by a new type of thinking, a new type of political thought called enlightenment. And the enlightenment thinkers had a different perspective on how the power of government should shift from the kings and queens to the people. And just because I think it's kind of a weird way to look at it, that's not all what enlightenment is. So here's truly what it is. The use of reason in shaping people's ideas about society and politics. So how life and government should operate together. That's what the enlightenment is. And you have a lot of people offering their opinions. So remember, most countries were ruled by a monarch, a king or queen, who thought God gave them the power to rule however they wanted. They had the divine right of kings, right? Then people started to question how government should work, right? And what purpose government really had in the world. And then people started to think that maybe they deserved more rights and freedoms and the government should protect those rights and freedoms. So all this is coming to head here as the enlightenment gets going. So let's look at the people who did the thinking, who did the writing, who kind of started this thought process, right? John Locke, he laid the government, I mean, the, not the government, the groundwork for most of the Enlightenment, right? He really did kind of the beginning work, the heavy, heavy lifting. He had the idea of the consent of the governed, which means the government only acts if the people grant their consent, give their permission, agree with it. Then the government would um, rule as, they, as the people choose, right? He's also known for saying people were born with natural rights, like life, liberty, and property. You were born with those as a human. That is what you get. Montesquieu said separation of powers. So think legislative, judicial, executive branches like the U.S. government. Right? That came from the idea of Montesquieu. Each branch acts independently but also works together at the same time, keeping each other in check and balance. You'll see what I did there? Yeah? That's an eighth grade joke. You'll get that in eighth grade. Okay, so here's kind of a, one more thinker that I want to talk about, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, right? He wrote the social contract, and it said uh, basically all people give up certain rights, like the, the right to kill, murder, rob, that type of stuff, more animalistic type rights, in exchange for government protecting citizens' rights of life, liberty, property, and the freedom of happiness, okay? So then what's next? Right? So now we have the kings and queens who are ruling, and we have people who are starting to think differently about how government should look. They're starting to write essays. They're starting to publish documents for other people to read. And now we have a lot of people thinking, you know, maybe monarchs aren't the best way to rule a country. Maybe kings shouldn't have all the power. Maybe queens and kings have too much power, and this is not the best way for the common person to live in a country. So many countries, like the U.S. and France, they begin to revolt and entire wars break out um, in an effort to set up a new government, and that is what we will talk about in our next unit.